Hi everyone, I hope you're well. This is Coins Kids. Just going to dive into the, uh, a video now about how to set up the charts. I'm just using this basic chart on the total market cap. It doesn't matter. Ignore what this particular chart is. All I'm going to do is drop the indicators in and show you each one, okay? Because I get asked so many questions. Uh, uh, how do you set up your fibs and what EMAs you're using and all that sort of business. So I'm just going to make this quick tutorial video for you. Uh, you only need basic indicators, really, okay? So off the bat, uh, my chart is obviously the drawings panel is dark and and the uh, dark color theme is enabled as well because I, I prefer it's easier on the eyes I think it makes better viewing as well personally for the videos um, so yeah that's basically that done uh, right now you can see everything else is pretty much default now up here in the indicators one thing you want to search for is E M A okay now click on that once and then click on it again to add two now one of those obviously is my um, 55 EMA this red line here now you go to the cog Come down to it and go to the cog like that okay now the style i like to have mine red it's up to you what what you want to have it as and obviously i have the thickness on the second one you see i can change the thickness okay i have my thickness on the second one i have the opacity uh to 100 percent right there and the inputs i have a 55 now a lot of people say why do you use the 20 and, and the 55 because so many people use the 21 and the 50 I'll tell you why, right? Because I'm a bit of a contrarian thinker. I like to think that I'm looking at something that no one else is. And this is why you'll start and you'll see me like think a little bit out of the box because that's what you've got to do in this space, okay? Think out the box a little bit. You've got thousands and thousands of people that are looking at the same charts with the same indicators and they're going to be sort of executing things on those particular indicators. Well, if you start to think a little bit out of the box, you can see things a little bit differently to them. And believe it or not, they do become fruitful over time. Okay, and you will you will equally find your own way. But this is what I do. This is my settings. This is what I've so used to, and I find it gives me a lot more breathing space as well, and a bit more moving uh, time to sort of think and, and not execute when you're looking at the 55 crossing the 21 and stuff like that. You know, it, it does it a bit quicker, in my opinion, than the dropping the 55 in, and sometimes it can reverse. So. You know, just for me, I use the 55 personally, EMA, and it's a fantastic uh, exponential moving average to use. Okay, so that's the 55, that's why I use that, and equally with the 20 as well. So obviously you've you've added another EMA by going to your indicators, searching EMA, okay, like that. Drop a moving average exponential in right that. And, uh, and then we're going to call this one the 20. Personally, I have it yellow. Again, it's up to you, uh, yellow. And obviously the second line right there and the input is 20. It really is that simple, okay? And that, that's it, you know? I've got these two moving averages in, exponential moving averages. The reason I use the EMA is because they're, they're less laggy than the moving averages as well. So it's more like real time, okay? So you can sort of see what's going on. Uh, quicker and execute things quickly okay and you can sort of see potentially where things are going as well a bit more quicker using the EMAs but that's my personal judgment again each to their own okay but this is my setup so right now obviously I've dropped my EMAs in and something else you'll see me use a lot okay are these indicators here now this is the stock RSI again uh, what you want to do is search for S-T-O-C-H RSI in your indicators drop that in like this S-T-O-C-H okay the stock RSI it's that one drop it in okay and then obviously I've got the RSI in as well like that RSI now relative strength index you drop that in uh, I do change my um, settings on this uh, not necessarily the inputs I leave the inputs default it's the style I like to change that to yellow so I can see it more by default it's I think it's blue or something you can hardly see it so that's that and obviously the MACD the MACD is really really cool get that into your indicators again just search MACD like that MACD boom drop it in and that's it that's the default and obviously you need volume in there as well you need to keep an eye on the volume uh, for these breaks okay when there's moves make sure they're backed up with volume because if they're not they're a bit fake and you want to see the volume increasing as well on on uh, momentum basically and obviously when volume is depleting and tailing off you can see it's tailing off it's always indicative of a break as well so that's another great indicator to drop into your charts okay volume and really easy vol volume and by default that's it boom so that's it uh, there are another couple of indicators I do like to use okay and, and one's the VPVR now the VPVR is very clever it shows you where there's a lot of volume okay for a particular um, uh, project that you're looking at you know support volume you can see where there's none and where it could fall and cascade to like for example just here, if you look at this particular chart this is the total 
crypto total market cap okay it's on the five day as well uh, it doesn't matter you can look at it any day but you know you can see just here if you was to lose this particular level this is where you would find a level of support do you see this because just here is a massive amount of volume that's been traded so effectively you could say look this is why i always told you target swing highs as support and swing lows as support do you see that because when you when you start to fall over and you're looking at charts and you don't know where the hell you're going to find support aside from your emas obviously if you lose the emas go short like i've told you always look for the the swing high and i've shown you so many times on so many crypto projects that is where they bounce okay that's where you'll find that support pop in and you can put cheeky bits on those particular levels on swing highs okay and then obviously as you can see the vpvr matches that as well with the the high pro, um, high volume there the high traded volume within that sort of area okay so that's a cool indicator you will see me drop it in now and again okay and that's basically it really i have a few other emas but nothing major i do like the 34 okay the 34 is really good to to show you that you're reversing a trend okay so in a minute like effectively like this is rollover hasn't it okay and it's bounced off for 55 and right now you you're above the the 35 this is daily five daily time frame as well you're above the 34 now if you can hold that as support then probability is it creeps you up and it makes you break the 20 on any time frame because it's acting as support like i said to you these emas are so important and if you get back above a 20 what are you you're in an uptrend aren't you if you blow this and you're hitting your head you're hitting your head it's forcing you to test the the 55 is support and eventually when you see that pop out that's when you're in your downtrend and or equally when you're falling okay i'll show you a prime example right now of, of the 34 in play let's take a look at xrp for example because we know we're under uh resistance at the moment on xrp we're in a bit of a downtrend let's have a look at xrp on the 34 on the hourly time frame okay so I click to auto like that and you can see the xrp is actually above it at the moment not the hourly on the on the four hourly time frame you can see the xrp is under the 34 okay so the 34 is just it's 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 a good other indicator to drop in okay because you can see when you enter a downtrend you can hit your head on it hit your head basically so drop the 34 in okay that's basically it and there's another little one that i use and i've never really gone through it with you and it's used on the five day okay and it's it's good for bull and bear markets and it shows you where maximum entry points are in a uh, bear market and like i said to you millionaires are made in bear markets aren't they so let me zoom out to a different chart just here for you yeah, so this particular indicator i've never really spoken about it before it's called the gaussian channel okay uh, i'll drop it in so i can show you and this is the gaussian channel on bitcoin um it works best on five day in my opinion okay and from the videos that i've seen on youtube as well and various other technical analysis the five day works the best and this is a lovely little indicator to show you the maximum entry points in a in a bull and bear market basically you know look down here when you're under the red band here okay look at the maximum entry points you under the red band just there do you see that boom maximum entry points do you see that so and it shows you as well where key level and critical support is right now for example bitcoin you can see is bounced off it do you see that as support now if bitcoin does start to roll through that that's another big side that you enter in that bear market right there and you start to fall into the channel because you can see from the history of bitcoin when you do start to fall in the channel okay let me put on log and auto when you do start to fall in the channel this is where you bearish okay do you see this just here you rolled over start to fall in the channel it's a big signal that you bearish and like I said to you, when you're under it, maximum maximum entry points. You see this, you're under this channel here, the Gaussian channel. You're under it. Wow, what an entry point. It's proven, look. What an entry point. What an entry point. So right now, as you can see, you do bounce off it as support. And right now, we are bouncing off it as support. So this is something that we do need to pay attention to. Aside from all the bearish crosses, the bullish crosses and stuff like that, this within itself is a fantastic signal of buy and sell and go to the beach, okay? Uh, so that's basically my chart setup. I hope you understand all that. So that's it, Gaussian channel. And to find it, you go to indicators and you type in G-A-U-S-S. And that's the first one, yeah. So G-A-U-S-S. And it's the first one, Gaussian channel. Okay, and I don't do anything with it, it's just default. And there it is, it's there in plain black and white. You see it, well, green and <laughs> green and red, sorry. Uh, and that's basically how I have my chart set up. So you can see with this Gaussian channel right here, you can see that it acts as a beautiful signal, doesn't it? To when to enter the enter. Uh, and like I said to you, you look at this on any chart, and millionaires are made in bear markets. Remember that bear market buy, bear market buy, 
little mini bear market because of the corona dump you see that by and this is an example of why i'm saying we're not in a bear market yet until we start to enter it enter into the channel start to go sideways in it like we do every time you can see we enter it we're in a bear market do you see that even this 2013 two-part ballroom right there we never entered the channel we had a wick down to the 55 but we never sort of entered or, or uh, traded inside the Gaussian channel do you see this so it's a massive massive indicator as soon as you do start to enter it and you're inside boom you're in a bear market so to speak and then wait wait until you're under the band where it's red maximal offering entry point in a bear market okay so that that's basically a little update for you from coins kid I hope you enjoyed that video oh and Fibonacci what am I doing Fibonacci okay so you want to see the Fibonacci okay that's the most important thing uh, I use that all the time okay so Fibonacci right now let's look at Fibonacci then so as you're fully aware here th this is why we can lay down price prediction so what we're going to do is drop in the Fibonacci uh, and you go on the charts here the third column down right there they've got a right little tick just there do you see that and you come down you've got this Fib retracement tool I like to put mine in my uh, favorites bar like that do you see that at the top how it's dropping in and out that's where my favorites bar is so i have that favorited because i use it so much and i always bring it to the front as well i bring it to the front like that because i use it so much okay so with this fib uh, personally there are other ways to, in which you can use it but this is the way i use it okay and this is the way i've become accustomed to and again it's personal preference and i'm, I'm a bit of a contrarian thinker and I use it differently to other chartists because I like to be different. I do. I like to think like they're thinking a certain way, they're, they're sort of herd mentality, and I'm thinking a different way to them. And that's what gives me the edge, basically. So right now, go from the bottom to the top like that, and you can see uh, this is how I do it. Okay, and I'll, I'll, I'll go through this with you completely. So obviously, as you're fully aware, I like to use log scale over anything else. Okay, so this is how I use it. So obviously if I drop from the bottom to the top previous bull market cycle top which I've spoken to you so many times uh, bear market bottom as you can see the red band you under it bear market bottom and we've got the buy and go to the beach signal from coins kid just there okay a lovely beautiful signal uh, okay where you're just starting to enter above as well that's good do you remember so yeah looking at continuation this is how we lay down our fibs and we come to these price predictions as you're fully aware uh, Bitcoin's got overextended here hit its head and rolling back to support and right now it's consolidating on a key level of support like we've spoken to you so many times before hopeful hopefully continuation in the bull market right there so anyway that's fibs and what i do log scale obviously now click on your fib and these are my settings for my fib okay so right click settings uh where are we just there and it comes up at the bottom you get a little tool toolbar like that do you see that it pops up when you highlight the fib uh click cog like that now what i do style okay these are my droplets that i have in these are my extension lines that i have in all of these okay and sometimes i'll drop a 272 in and that's what gives me that further extension uh, price prediction okay so at the minute these are my default settings like that now what i like to do is have my fib in reverse a lot of people don't understand why but again it's i like to be different reverse i have them in reverse okay and i have fib levels based on log scale like that okay and then visibility is pretty much default coordinates pretty much default and, and that's basically it that's how i use it okay and this is my fib settings again i like to be different okay so uh and obviously what else did i have i have my uh, prices i have them to the right okay i think defaults to left and I have mine to the right like that and that's simply it and click OK and it saves the settings for you and that's it think outside the box people so that's basically a little tutorial on all my little indicators and the settings that I have for each of those and you will see me dropping them in and out of the videos that I make on YouTube and the post that I post on Twitter so I hope that helped everybody um, really simple basically so that's the tutorial video on all the chart setup and yeah so that's basically it. oh and time frames as well uh, obviously these are my quick time frames just here uh, just a 15 one hour four hour eight hour day week and five day now to uh, quick access to get is just press W on your keyboard uh, sorry press seven day on your keyboard like that you know and then one month like that and then one Y uh, is for oh, it's 12 M sorry for, for, for uh, a year and then one D like that Do you see that or one H you can press enter they're little shortcuts that not a lot of people know about uh another little shortcut i'll show you i'll show you all the little tricks that i know so wherever you are okay on on a chart say you want to draw a horizontal line instead of going all the way up here 
okay and, and draw in a horizontal ray or a horizontal line like that there is a shortcut so highlight where you want to draw a horizontal line press alt and press h on your keyboard job done it drops a horizontal line in for you okay and then say you want to drop a vertical line in you just press alt and v like that okay and it drops a, a vertical line in for you now you will see and in some videos I do revert the chart okay I, I, I flip it upside down now to flip the chart upside down press alt and I okay and that inverts the chart that's a quick little thing that, that's actually good to use for many reasons okay so yeah alt I brings it back like that and what else is there um, that's basically it I think so yeah that's basically how I do my stuff uh, I hope you enjoyed that little tutorial video and um, yeah thank you for your support and thank you for your your subscription and um you see it's not rocket science is it i always say that it's not rocket science and i do believe that anyone can do this so go ahead learn charting learn to read the charts and also there's so many different patterns out there i'm going to make like a patterns section on coinskid.com uh, where you know my understanding of patterns and stuff like that that i see so many times in the charts reversal patterns are the, are the best okay so, so that's basically it. I hope you enjoyed that little update on how I set my charts up and the indicators and stuff like that that I use. So, um, yeah, stay strong, everybody. Stay healthy, stay tuned. And once again, thank you for your support. Take care. Bye-bye.